Okay. Um, welcome everyone to the final session to the final session of this Rad Summit. Uh, we've moved up through the stack to applications, so the topics will uh, now all be oriented around applications. Uh, first will be by Xiaoban, who will be presenting remotely and will be talking about um, neural network interfaces. Um, so Xiaoban, um, please um, take the floor. Um, yeah, yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. And yeah, give a warm welcome to Xiaoban. Yeah. Wait a minute, I will share my screen. So yeah, could you see my slides? Yes, we see your slides, we see you. Ready yeah, to go. Okay. Yeah, then yeah, let's begin. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Thank you for the introduction. Yeah, and um, good afternoon again. Uh, I'm Zhao Lan, a PhD student from Freie Universität Berlin. Uh, I'm happy to have the opportunity to share our recent work with you, the U2, uh, Universal Tiny Machine Learning on Board Evaluation Toolkit for the Low Power IoT. So um, at the beginning, I want to take you on a journey to explore two fascinating aspects of the technology. Uh, the widespread invasion of artificial intelligence, AI, and the growing trend of AI at age. First, let's talk about how AI is invading everything around us. Imagine a world where your everyday devices, from your smartphone to your car and even your fridge, can think and make decisions just like humans. That's AI for you. It's like giving machines a brain to assist us with tasks. Now let's shift our focus to the trending concepts of AI at age. Uh, imagine yourself in a small, small village far, far away from the city and you need assistance. With AI at age, you can have a virtual friend, a doctor, a driver right there with you. This AI doesn't rely on any distant server. It's right there in your device and ready to assist and enhance your experience without any data leaks and privacy concern. So in a nutshell, AI is invading everything around us. And with AI at age, we are bringing AI closer to where the action, where the environment is, and ensuring that intelligent assistance is available even in the remote location. And today's journey will start with a crash course to give you some fundamentals on tiny machine learning and neural network. Then we will look into the challenges and related work with which uh, review gaps that you two tries to fill in. After that, we will talk in talk about the details of you two, uh, about how we implemented it and what we can do with it. We also tested some models which gathers from various machine learning tasks on wide spectrum of IoT boards, and we will take a briefly discussion about the results. Uh, at the end, I will talk about how we will extend the YouTube and what we will contribute to the community for both Riot and machine learning community in the future. So uh, let's begin. Um, first, uh, machine learning is a concept. It's a combination of complex algorithms. And it's about how computers make decisions automatically on some collected data without any rule-based programming. Uh, there are two main significant characteristics. Uh, the machine learning algorithm is compute intensive and data intensive. And currently the most popular algorithm in machine learning is the neural network. So uh, what is the tiny machine learning, uh, AKA tiny ML? Um, tiny machine learning is a methodology about how to push such data driven decision program to the edge, to the device with poor resource. And tiny machine learning focuses on deploying machine learning model, for example, the neural network on the embedded devices to enhance the intelligence of the network edge. So uh, what is a machine learning model? A model is a computational representation of a process or a system. 
it's learnable. It's a learnable function, uh, which maps the input data to some predictions or to some classifications of of the pictures or the voice. A machine uh, that learns the parameters from data, we call this process model training. And in the training stage, the parameters changes and are optimized based on a vast amount of data to learn the patterns of the real world. After training, the target device used the model to make decisions or predictions on some new received, which is unseen in the training process data. What we call this stage is a model inference. And by now, you two uh, focuses on model inference, and in the future, it will provide more features like on device training. We'll talk about it later. And um, now let's dive in, dive into the most popular star in the machine learning, uh, the neural network. Um, but neural network is a layer-wise and nonlinear function compositions. A neuron here is a function. It first performs the multiplications and addition set on the inputs X with the weight W and the bias B. This input X is from sensors or from the previous layers, and then push it into the nonlinear operations to generate the output Y. For each layer, you can have uh, arbitrary new neurons and can be treated the layer can be treated as a matrix operations. And for each neural network, they could also have arbitrary layers. These layers compose, compose with each other to construct a complex network. Here, the HN is the function of the nth layer. And for the innermost function is the first layer. When the numbers of the layer n equals three, we call it the multi-layer perceptron. It is the most original neural network. And nowadays, some neural networks contain the dozens, even hundreds of layers. This input in the function compositions, so that we call it deep learning. And when we change the matrix or the vector multiplication in Z to the convolution, then we get the most popular architecture in the neural network, the convolutional neural network. Uh, this picture below shows a convolutional neural network. We call it NeNet. It is for the handwriting recognitions. And with, uh, with some uh, modifications, it can even beat the human experts on these um, handwriting recognitions tasks. Um, nevertheless, uh, all neural networks are built with operators. The first type operators are affine transformations, including the convolution, multiplications, and additions. They contribute the most compute and memory-intensive memory workloads. And in particular, for the 2D two-dimensional convolution, the complexity increases with in the order of n squares. And it is just for one layer. For some large scale neural networks like ChatGPT, such uh, operators are so heavy that can be only done by the GPUs. And for the most nonlinear operators, they are compute resource friendly, but not cache friendly. And it is also memory intensive. Um, in addition, here are some popular framework for building and training neural networks. It's very convenient to use, and with few lines of Python code, you can build models that can uh, even fake your voice and your face. Um, but everything changes when you try to deploy and train the models on embedded devices rather than on uh, convolutional computers. Deploying a uh, uh, neural networks on tiny devices is like uh, putting an elephant in a fridge. The most successful large language model, ChatGPT, has one 
175 billion parameters and use more than 10,000 GPUs for training. And at this time, could we have our own ChatGPT running on tiny devices like this Raspberry Pi Pico? Um, the first bound for this task is the resource constraints. On the personal computer or server, the models are deployed in the GPU with memory and storage in gigabytes and the processors in gigahertz. While in the embedded devices, it is only with the MCU up to hundreds of gigahertz and the memory in few kilobytes. So the most models needs to be adapted in sacrifice of accuracy. For some real-time applications, they require the models process uh, data as quick as possible so that it wouldn't hit the hard deadline. Those requirements in tidy ML urge uh, continual iterations between the models and devices in earlier uh, prototype stage. Hence, we need a toolkit for model evaluations on IoT devices to check if the model is deployable, if it is visible to deploy on the specific boards, or if the resource consumption is under the budget. And for seconds, we need to locate a bottleneck to, to know which parts of the neural network model consumes the most of the compute and memory resources so that we can know where to shape. Finally, the toolkit should be able to have a quick check on virus MCU's specific models so that we can gather a profile matrix for design purpose. To build such a solution, we we, we build, uh, some works in model compilations, model profilers, and tiny ML benchmarks and some low power IoT platform. For the model compilation, is trained, uh, model compilation is translating neural network model into executable code on devices. The major machine learning frameworks such as um, PyTorch, the <clears throat> TensorFlow only supports their own model files and most of them focus only on convolutional GPU and CPU, not MCU. Uh, here, this TVM, the Tensor Virtual Machine is a transpiler, is an open source transpiler, which can consume modules from various frameworks and then optimize and compile the modules to various devices. For the micro TVM is a uh, variations from TVM is a special branch which can generate executable and optimized codes for MCUs. For uh, model, model profiles have some have the same situation as model compilations. Most of the machine learning frameworks provide internal profiles, but only have merely support for the IoT boards. Uh, MLX Ray is a novel model profiler. It's just released uh, this year. It's very easy to use, but not supports IoT boards as well. There are also benchmarking suits and benchmarks for, sorry, for tiny MLs like uh, ML Perf Tiny, but they only focus on specific models or on specific IoT boards, which would could narrow their generality. For IO, uh, low power IoT platforms, Riot and Fit IoT Lab is a good candidate for model deployment. A show be known. It uh, provides us a wide spectrum support of MCUs and IoT boards so that we can uh, test you to on virus devices. After reviewing the entire <coughs> work, we still can conveniently evaluate customized models from arbitrary machine learning frameworks on arbitrary low power IoT boards. There is a gap from machine learning models to the IoT boards. 
So um, we just signed you to for filling these gaps. The goals of you two are automatically compressing and flashing and evaluating arbitrary models on arbitrary commercial of the shell low power boards. It evaluates how many memories and storage resource the model consumes and how much it needs for the how much time it needs for the data processing. U tools um have two granularities. It measures the models uh in per module or in per operator uh, modes. Per module evaluation measures performance of the model as a as a <clears throat> whole systems, which means the resource footprint including all its layers and operators uh, are measured. Uh, for example, uh, this allows for evaluating the resource consumptions for some production ready code and production ready models on the particular industry hardware setup. For the uh, the per operator evaluation measures separately the performance of one or more operators. This measure these measurements can help to identify the specific operators that contributes the most in efficiencies on the device and finding out the potential bottlenecks. Um, here is the hardware configuration of new tool. The host PC um, is normally connected with one or more local IoT boards by serial ports. And if you don't have such a board in hand, you can also use the remote ports on Fit IoT Lab test bed through the series open TCP. On the software side, all the compilation and machine learning frameworks are hosted on the PC, uh, which responsible the com on the device side, you chose worker evaluates them, evaluates and measures the model under the operating system and the hardware support of Riot. In the per model evaluation, U2 worker gathers the measurements data and log back to the host, to the host PC. And in the per operator evaluation, uh, RPC terminal is set up for the device and the host for more complicated com uh, communications and measurements. Now let's see how the general workflows of the U2. Yeah, uh, at the first step, the TVM translates the models from different machine learning frameworks into C codes or LLVM IR, which is optimized to different MCUs based on the customized, based on the um, configurations of the customers on the development developers. Second, the model codes are co-compiled with the Riot and the U2 module into the firmware according to the type of the target device. And finally, U2 flashes the firmware to the target board and gathers the performance matrix back to the host. This workflow provides a model to broad solution which allow us to evaluate the arbitrary models on arbitrary IoT boards. So at the next stage, to validate the functionality and the generality of the YouTube, we conducted some exper experiments on of virus models on different IoT boards. So our model two contains the models from of uh, from virus structures on different tasks. So uh, from the classifications to the regressions to um <clears throat> to uh, enlarge the generality of the module. Also our MCU zooms contains two main strain of ISA, the ARM context M series and the RICS5. <clears throat> uh, as you can see here is also the numbers of the parameters. Um, this parameter is 
this the numbers of the parameters is uh, optimized so that it can be um, <clears throat> deployed on such tiny devices. And also we disable the data and instruction cache to observe the memory wall effects in ML modules. Uh, this table shows the results of the Linux 5, which is used for handwriting recognitions on various IoT boards. So uh, no surprisingly, the computational latency decreases with the increment of the core frequency. But there is an outlier here, the high five one B with the highest core frequency, it won the worst computational latency. Uh, this RIX-5 MCU uses an external and SPI node flash for data and program storage, which could cause a huge performance regressions while we disable the cache. This table shows the results of different models on STM32 disco uh, evaluation boards. Since the mobile nets has the largest structure, yeah, yeah, as shown here, the largest parameters. So uh, it consumes the most resource, resources comparing to other models. The table below shows the per operator evaluations of a simple model, which uh, predicts the sinus value for a, a given X. You can see the second operator, these operators, consumes the most of the resources with the highest <clears throat> latency, computational latency, and the highest memory and storage consumption. We can then trace down the corresponding layer of the neural network. So with the hints of these associated parameters, they, they are the weights, bias, or other trainable parameters of the models so that we uh, it could uh, we can <coughs> uh, apply some optimization strategies on that layers of the of these operators now we successfully uh, built a generic solutions for performance evaluation of neural network on wireless iot boards but um, what's next for the current state, U2 uh, is still a command line based application. So we are now building a GUI for more user friendly interface. And we also consider to make U2 as a um, Riot package so it can, it can co in love with Riot and provide a tiny ML solution for the community. And also, uh, there is some. Uh, some weird things during the development of YouTube, we discovered some numerical issues in TVM, which generates insistence, inconsistent results comparing with the PyTorch. Uh, it needs us more interactions with the TVM community to solve these issues. On the machine learning support sites, uh, YouTube now only supports evaluation model inference we will keep push it to support on device training uh, more complicated scenarios also there are other powerful machine learning algorithms such as svm decision trees and reinforcement learning and so on and we are also planning to generalize youtube for the algorithm other than neural network or for even or uh, even for some compute intensive tasks in scientific computing like a uh, fluid uh, uh, simulations. Uh, yeah, um, <clears throat> there's a demo by country than the fit IoT labs. So yeah, maybe we can skip this part. Uh, here is the example of the YouTube's output. It measures the the uh, modules for ten times and 
gener generate some statistic numbers for that. And for conclusion, we provided an open source and generic model to boy evaluation solution. And we provided in this work a comparative experimental ex uh, resource that can be um, as a reference for the model's development and yeah, for some model accelerator um, <clears throat> development. So uh, yeah, thanks for your attention. And uh, here's the, uh, the report and the archive of the YouTube. You can download it with these links and try out those demos uh, on your uh, PC. So yeah, um, there are any questions for that? First of all, uh, thanks for the presentation. Is there some connection issues? Or? Um, question from the audience. Um, uh, sorry. Seeing no, yeah. Um, seeing no hands, um, I do have one. Um, I've seen that a few um, of the uh, microcontrollers that we support in Riot already um, are um, shipped with uh, neural network um, acceleration units. Um, yeah. Do you expect that to be a trend that's continuing um, from the manufacturer side, and how much how much of a difference can those make? Uh, uh, may I repeat in the questions? Uh, you mean there are already some machine learning accelerator units on the uh, IoT boards, right? Yes. And how should we consider to translating those um, neural network model into the primitives that uh, as accelerator can support? Well, I, I, I have a little clue about machine learning. I just saw that we, those are around. So I'm, I'm, I'm curious whether you think that this is a, this is something that kind of what they could do or. Uh, well, what 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 the accelerator can do or what the U2 can do. Sorry, I, I maybe I misun misunderstanding well, some questions. I was just curious whether they whether they those could be combined, whether they could be used with, with your tools. Yeah, they can they could use U tools. Uh, I think uh to support the accelerators there is an interface in the TVM so that you can write the uh, primitives of the accelerators so that the TVN can translate your uh, machine learning models to that primitives. And then you too can also um, measurement that with the support of the RPC. Yeah, there is a, this uh, RPC mechanism is uh, actually implemented by the TVN. It can also measurements those um, resource consumption of the unit uh the neural network accelerators yeah the yeah, i am um, your questions yeah um yeah 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 there is some latencies by my side i think yeah. sorry Comments that uh, with these these accelerators are really nice, but they're a little bit like uh, from our from our experience, uh, a little bit of a state where uh, uh, you know trust zone right now. So there is some stuff, but they to program it uh, well and to, for example, like to go in the direction of learning on device. They, there's not even an interface for that. But, uh, okay. So they are like. Be some addition that have uh, to have like the flexibility. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The software is like uh, somewhere near that. So then, uh, that's it. Like, uh, most definitely hardware and just like the top, uh, you get like a huge, uh, performance, that's for sure. Uh, yeah. Sorry, that never is not sustainable. Again. More questions? Well then, um, thanks. Thanks for joining us remotely. Yeah, thank you, you all. Yeah, also, yeah.